someone asked, did you see JJ Fat on Vlad TV? And um, did, talk to us about JJ Fat because I know you had a hand in their success as well, right? Or something. Yeah. Uh, JJ Fat was um, was she, when I formed the company called West Coast Record Distributors, which were the first African American owned record distribution owned by artists. JJ Fad was on uh, one, of, one of our labels, Dream Team Records, owned by Rudy Pardee from the LA Dream Team. And Arabian Prince, Arabian Prince, Arabian Prince, Arabian, Arabian Prince produced the song, and it was actually going to be dissing. Uh, I think it was Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper, yeah. Another hole. <clears throat> and they flipped it over. Somebody flipped it over and played Supersonic and. The rest was history. Meanwhile, um, allegedly there was some some uh, some good times going on between some of the members of JJ Fad and Dr. Dre and uh, Arabian Prince. Okay. Allegedly, mm -hmm. and they wanted to go with Rufus, and the Rufus could have deal with Easy. Easy could have deal with Rudy to buy JJ Fad single, and they took it to Rufus, built a, a album around it. And uh, shit, Rudy bought him a badass Cadillac. He bought him a Super Pimp Mobile. He, he bought him a Cadillac that was so cold, it was almost, we, call, we called him Superfly. He <laughs> bought a two door convertible Cadillac Seville. Goddamn. Two door convertible Cadillac Seville. That shit sounds dope as hell. Huh? That shit sounds dope. With the two, with the tires on the side of it. To, on, you know, right by the front door, the mm -hmm. two, uh, tire imprints on both sides. At that time, that was one of the baddest Cadillacs everybody anybody ever saw. Okay, mm. and it was white with red interior. He drove it to West Coast record distributors, and he loved it. It was a badass car. We, we always talked about it. Don't know what happened to it, but it was a badass car at the time. Mm. Do you know why JJ Fad didn't really, I guess, for lack of better words, just had that one hit? They had another record, but the devil, nothing was ever as big as Supersonic. Yeah. But you know what, though? As much as they work, shit, that's all they need. We got more hits. Mm -hmm. We got more hits than JJ Fad, and they work all the time. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't stop working. They only stop working when the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I saw them at a, a 90s uh, or like an 80s, whatever, gig, a gig two right. years ago. Yeah. They came out and did their thing. Damn, man, Salt and Pepper. They got a hot 20 minutes and they go. And I think I was just uploading one video today for my uh, my Roku channel. Y'all, um, we're about to go live on Roku. If you like what we're doing here, I'm taking uh, my content from my other shows and this show right here. I'm going to bring Dusty Vision with me. We have I have a Roku channel called the, a new, the uh, Homegrown Media Network. It's on Roku. I'm trying to upload some videos right now and take it live ASAP. I'm a little behind, but I'm trying to take it live by this weekend, hopefully. So yeah. we'll, this show right here will be live on Roku as well. So I got some big plans coming up in the next few weeks uh, for the channel and for uh, the studio, the whole nine yards. It's all going to involve uh, being on Roku. Roku? That's a funny-ass word, Roku. Yep. That's dope, man. I love it. More ears, more eyes, and more ways to experience expand this brand man um yeah let's squeeze this last question in here shout out og shags he always he or she always seems to uh support the show but og shag says how well do you know tony a from the swap me days tony a from the swap me days tony a was he was my man with uh steve Yano. um back then i knew him but you got people people forget i'm a lot older than these guys a lot of these guys are so Tony, when me and Steve was doing our thing, Steve would come out of the house, pick up records. I'd go to swap meet, pick up money. Uh, sometimes he'd give me money right here at the house. Tony A was there. He was a real young kid, though. I, I, I bet we've got to, I've got to know him more as um, he started to do his Rodeo Swap Meet, um, Rodeo Swap Meet podcast. And um, we 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 have uh, we have a good relationship. In fact. He picked up Steve Yano's award. We awarded Steve Yano um, an award for the uh, local revolution. Gave Steve Yano an award last year, and Steve and uh, Tony A was 
picked it up for from Sue, his wife. So that's dope. Now, Dr. Dre was hot in the streets with the mixtapes, I think, associated with Rhodium as well. And and do you know anything about those Rhodium mixtapes? I remember hearing them float around. It was a little bit before my time, but I still remember them. Here, here, here's, here's the shit. Uh, the mixtapes were something, it wasn't even, make, well, it was, it became mixtapes because tapes, you can actually duplicate those faster. But I was doing mixed 12 inches, and that's how I met Steve Yano. I met Steve Yano uh, on one of my runs out of Pico, and he was down. I, I never knew there was an Asian dude selling records before. So I go to sell these records to one of my connects down on Pico, and Steve said, I'm looking for you. I thought it was the FBI agent. I was like, oh, fuck, I got to go. I'm about to take out running. And yeah, hold on, man, hold on, man. Cool, be cool, be cool. Dude, I don't know you. I, 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 as far as I was concerned, I was selling dope. And uh, the guy who I was selling to, he gave him the approval. He's cool, man, he's cool. And took a long, took, took a minute for me to be comfortable with him. Because again, I don't know a Japanese dude that sell no records. So um, we got cool, he came to the car. He said, man, I can, I can sell a lot of these. Can you really? <laughs> and he says, uh, he, started, he started buying from me. And then he got comfortable. He come by the house. When he got to come by the house, he saw how I was doing it. And uh, Dre would go to the swap meet. And because Steve had this, had this uh, permanent spot at the swap meet every Saturday, he bought a couple of duplicators, I believe. And as Dre would do the mixes, shit, he was selling right there. And you know, the rodeo swap meet was the first swap meet. Well, not, well, not the first, but it was, excuse me, probably one of the oldest swap meets in Southern California. We used to walk through the rodeo from my house like, as kids. We'd walk through the rodeo because rodeo, but rodeo stopped, stopped showing movies a long time ago. So we'd walk through the rodeo from the pad. Steve wouldn't be there during the week that I recall. On the weekends, he would be there, and um, that became the hangout spot. Uh, Tony A would be there. Dre would be there. Uh, later on, he, he, uh, he uh, was me and Steve. Was, Steve was trying to find DJ Quick, and at that same time, I had another artist named Quick Fan, and I was trying to sell Steve Quick Fan. He said, "I want Quick," and uh, <laughs> I was trying to slang him back then. Doc. And uh, please tell me you have. Please tell me you have a Quick Sand tape that I can listen to someday. I have a quick sample. only did one song with me on my copy. Just copy. by the name, just by the name, I want to hear the song. All right, I, I, I dig it. <laughs> All right, and um, and and by this time, quick was quick was making his 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 uh his name in the streets of Compton, and uh, once Steve finally got him, that's how he got his dealer profile. Mm. Yep, Scandalous Records. That was Steve mm. Steve Yano's label, Scandalous Records, second and none. High C, DJ Quick, mm -hmm. all the signed scandalous records. Yep, yep. And so, I, uh, I had Tony A. Yeah, I had Tony A. on my show, and he mentioned that at first people didn't want to mess with High C because they thought he was a Easy E ripoff, but just a blood version of Easy E. So I guess I, looking back, you could kind of see that back then. Right. Yeah, man. Damn. What's that? I, I, I he used to perform. At, he used to perform at Eve After Dark back in the day. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. 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 He had. He had, he had a few hits actually. He had. Yeah, I'm he not did. your puppet. He had uh, sitting by the park. I mean, he had a few few dope songs. Yeah. Uh, Second and None did too. They had some real good songs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Second and None too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. If yeah. you want it, I got it. That was my shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, Damn, yeah. Lonzo. That's crazy. Right. No, I'm just thinking of the shit you've seen, man, like just through your eyes, man. I wish I was a fly on the wall for like just a day back in 1985, man. You were you were there, like I said, chopping the weeds down and just finding your way through, bumping into JJ Fab, bumping into High C, bumping into Steve Yano. Like, it, it's crazy the shit you've seen, man. You know what, man? And somebody asked me, would I do it all or what would I do different? And uh, I'd look back and thought about it as much money as I don't have, I still wouldn't trade. I still would trade what I do. I, and people, don't, you have to understand what I do and what I don't do. You know, um, I can pretty much go anywhere I want to, financially or safety-wise. You see what I'm saying? 
I don't need to have, I have a bunch of people following me around to go to Disneyland with my grandkids. Um, I ain't bought out of control, but I didn't want I want to go get them. I go get it. But I've learned that at a certain age, a lot of that shit ain't important. Okay. Um, I don't I, I don't mind being recognized, but I don't want to be so famous that I can't go nowhere. Yeah. You know, I I yeah. I, 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 I still go to Home Depot. Guard, hey, what's up, dude? Hey, you? Yeah, I'm cool. I go, to, I go eat. Hey, man, you? Yeah, that's cool. But I don't want to pop right to you outside my house. Um, I'm gonna see my. I'm gonna do my dirt. I don't need nobody around me. Man. <laughs> so you know, it's it's cool, doc. You know, I can all like I said, like anybody else, I can always use some more money. But uh, sometimes that comes with another set of problems. So it is what it is, doc. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad you're here to tell your story, and uh, let's keep it going, man. So you said Thursday, you got Big Les? I got Big Les. I'm going to do her early at 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to take it live, but I'll probably do a replay at 6 o'clock. Just some people people who missed it can still see it. Perfect, perfect. Like yeah. me some pictures a few minutes ago. I'm going to uh, do her, set her up so I can send her the link and do 11 o'clock uh, Thursday morning. Cool, cool. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Always a pleasure, my man. Any last words? Man, y'all keep watching. Keep, keep, uh, if you ain't got Roku, get it. If you don't, don't worry yeah. about it. We'll still be on, we'll still be here on Facebook and YouTube. But, um, we try to take this thing to another level, folks. So stay tuned. Uh, much love to everybody for watching, to keep supporting. Much love to you, Dusty Vision. You too, my man. And, and much love to the chat. I forgot about the chat. Shout out to J Joshi13, Celebrate Life Cerebral, Pat Elslin, um, OG Shags, Maxi Mixy M. The chat is always popping, man. I mean, thank you guys so much for the love. All right, folks. From the West Coast to the East Coast and everything in between, folks, you're live with God Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. From concerts in the park to Eve after dark. We're still doing it, baby. Peace. Peace, man.